protect the innocent. Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. For the past 10 days, a gunman has been terrorizing the downtown area of your city. You know he's armed and dangerous. Your job? Stop him. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, October 5th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of robbery detail. My partner is Frank Smith. The boss is Chief of Detective Stad Brown. My name's Friday. I was on my way back to Metropolitan Division. It was 7.56 p.m. when I got to the city hall. Robbery squad room. Hey, buddy, you didn't have to make a special trip in to bring the tie. Well, I might have forgot it tomorrow and left it in the car again. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Hey, the card's still in the box, huh? No. Hey, look at this. Real pretty. Go good with my brown suit. Real silk, too, huh? Mm hmm. That's a pretty clever idea, putting a name on a tie like that. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I used to do the same thing with ink and paper when I was a kid. You know, put a gob of ink on the paper and then fold it over. Mm hmm. I got some pretty weird looking pictures. This name business makes a nice, neat tie pattern, don't you think, Joe? Yeah, if you don't mind the switch. On the name, you mean? Yeah. No. Unless you're looking for it, you wouldn't know it said Joe Friday. Here, take a look. See? This is going to hop to be when I'm wearing it. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, well, as long as you're satisfied, you're the one that's going to wear it. Well, sure. Looks great to me. Of course, if you're going to turn your head sideways and read it, then you can see it says Joe Friday, but I don't think people are going to go to all that trouble. You think so? No, I don't think so. Did you talk to Stoner? Yeah, so they'll meet us later. All right, better get going, huh? Yeah. Want to get your coat? It's coming down pretty hard out there. Right. You think it'll keep the suspect inside? I don't know. It isn't going to work for us. Hot shot. I got it. Let's go. 211 at Flower and 14. Frank and I left the office and drove out to the address. It was a small neighborhood liquor store. In spite of the heavy rain, a large crowd had already gathered in front of the place. We parked our car and tried to get into the store. Let us through here, folks, please. Now, stop pushing. There's no reason to give you a special pass. Police officer, let us through. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. It's all right. Let us through here. I've been around, seen a lot of tough guys, but there was something wrong with this fellow. Back there, Joe. Now, you call the ambulance yet? Can't we do something for poor Claude? Don't just let him lay there. You from downtown? That's right. Friday and Smith Central Robbery. You answer the call? Me and my partner. That him outside? That's right. You get a description? It's out. Okay. Ain't anybody going to ask me what happened? Yes, sir. Just a minute, please. Seems all you fellows are interested in is what the guy looked like. Don't nobody want to know what happened? Yes, sir. We do. If you'll wait just a minute, please. No choice. Anything more I can do here? No, not right now. Okay. I'll be outside if you need anything. Right, thanks. All right, sir, you want to tell us? About time. What's that? All this running around and yelling. Wonder you fellas don't catch anybody. Don't slow down long enough for me to tell you what happened. Uh-huh. You want to go ahead? Worst thing I ever saw in my whole life. Most terrible. Yes, sir. Were you alone in the store when the shooting occurred? No. Well, who else was there? Claude, Anita, and me. Claude's the victim. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's him there. Yes, sir. Don't you think somebody ought to do something for him? Seems like the ambulance ought to be here. Well, he's dead, sir. Claude? That's right. You've got to catch the fellow who's done this. Most brutal thing I ever saw. No reason for any of it. That guy was off his rocker. You mentioned somebody named Anita. Is she still here? Yeah, in the back room. She wasn't feeling too good. Almost scared her half to death. Went back there to take an aspirin and lay down. Scared. I wonder if we could talk to her. You have to? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll go get her. You just wait here. Anita? Anita? It's me, Hanley. Can you come out? Police. They want to talk to you. We don't like to bother you, lady. We'll try to be as brief as possible. It's all right. Would you give us your name? This is Miss Anita Blaine. I'm Hanley Dawson. I don't think you told us your name. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hello. How are you doing? Is there anything we can get for you, Miss Blaine? No, I'm all right now. All right. Would you tell us what happened? We was back at the counter playing a game of cribbage. 
You were the victim? Yeah, me and Claude. His full name's Claude Langford. We was there playing the game. Were you in the store at the time? No, I came in later. I'm trying to tell you in the right order. Can't do it if you're going to keep interrupting. All right, you go right ahead. Oh, we were having a good game. Claude was ahead, already made the first turn. Oh, my crib and I really had a good hand. Might have caught him. Yes, sir. We were just about to play the hand when the door opened. Kind of surprising. Why is that? Didn't figure anybody would be out on a night like this. I see. It was this young kid. All right, go ahead. Come in and ask me where we kept the canned nuts. You know, cashews and almonds? Yes, sir. Pointed it out for him. He went over to have a look. Mm Mm-hmm. Claude and me started back to the game, but the kid found what he wanted, and he came up to the counter. All right. I got up to wait on him. Handed me a $5 bill for two cans of peanuts. Yeah. Opened the register to get change. That's when he pulled the gun. And where'd he have the gun? In his overcoat pocket. It was funny, though. And not funny, ha-ha, but funny. Odd. You know? How do you mean that? Well, you know how most raincoats have a little slit in the pocket so you can reach into your pants pockets without unbuttoning your raincoat? Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, the kid unbuttoned his coat and reached right through the slit with the gun. Kind of like this. You see? See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what did he say when he showed you the gun? Like this. This is a stick-up. Keep your mouth shut and you might not get hurt. Might. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. What happened then? Told both Claude and me to come out from behind the counter. Said for us to lay down on the floor. Yeah. We did like he said, you know. There was just something about that kid, so you had to go his way. Mm Mm-hmm. He made us lay down right there where Claude is now, on our stomachs. Yeah, what happened then? Went over and took the money out of the cash register. Then he really got sore. I thought he was going to explode. Why, do you know? Wasn't much for him to take. Only about $20, $25. Guess he expected more. I see. He come over to where me and Claude were on the floor. Told us to take the money out of our pocket. Stood there with a gun pointed right at us. He was mad. Mm -hmm. He did what he said. You just bet we did. I only had about six bucks on me. Gave it right to him, though. Yeah. That's when Anita here come into the store. Just walked in. Like a rabbit into a fox's trap. That's right. I didn't have any idea what was going on. Couldn't you see through the door? I guess I should have, but it was raining so hard I didn't take the time. Glass was kind of steamed up, too. Made it tough to look in. I see. What happened when the holdup man saw you? He told me to keep my mouth shut, not to make a sound and get down on the floor. Just like us. Mm -hmm. He grabbed my purse and took the wallet out, went through it and took the money. How much was it? Just a couple of dollars. I came over to get a bottle of wine and I only took what I needed. All right. You want to go on? He started on Claude. Told him to empty his pockets. Yeah. Claude didn't take too kindly to the way this fellow was acting. If he'd just come in and taken the money, it might have been different. But Claude don't like to be shoved around. Yeah. He did like the kid told him, though. Emptied his pockets right out. I see, sir. Well, you just figure the man was real sore when he saw how much money he was going to get. Yeah. You see, Claude don't work. He's got some kind of pension. All alone in the world, he usually don't have much money. Main reason he comes over to play cards. He ain't got nothing else to do. And it's free. Mm-hmm. How much do you have on him tonight? 37 cents. Kid saw that. I thought, sure, he's going to kill us all. He sure acted like it. Then he figured maybe Claude was holding out on him. Told him to turn his pockets inside out. He did like he was told. Yeah. When he did, something fell out of his pocket. A coin hit the floor and rolled around. Disappeared under the counter over there. The man with a gun saw it and got real mad. Said Claude tried to get away with something. Said for him to go pick up the coin. Claude told him if he wanted it that bad, he could get it himself. Yeah. Fella just looked at Claude for a minute. And then put the gun right against his head. Right here, see? Didn't say a word. Just pulled the trigger. It was crazy. No reason for it. Claude must have been dead when he hit the floor. Just brutal. What did he do then? Ran outside. Did you try and follow him? No, sir. Me and Anita were trying to see if there was anything we could do for Claude. Did the man get into a car, do you know? I didn't see. Might have, but I didn't see it. Did you hear a car? No. Uh-huh. Have you ever seen the man around here before? Not that I remember. A lot of people go by the door. Hard to pick one, make it stand out. You'd know him again if you saw him, though, would you? I think so. I would. Ma'am? I'll never forget the way he looked at me. Like some kind of animal. I see. Something about his eyes. He looked crazy, real wild. Well, how do you mean that? Well, he, he wasn't looking right at us. Like there was somebody standing behind me. He was looking at them. He couldn't focus, you know. I know what you mean. Say, did you see the coin that Langford dropped? No, just heard it hit the floor. Uh-huh. Find it? I think so. Look, she doesn't make much sense. Take a look at it. What is it? Streetcar token. The men from the crime lab arrived and photographed the store. Diagrams were made showing the position of the body and the premises were checked thoroughly. The victims were taken to the city hall to check the mug book. 
They were unable to make an identification. The canvas was started to the immediate area in the hope that we might be able to turn up a witness to the shooting. One of the uniformed officers talked to a newsboy who had seen a man run from the liquor store. Frank and I went down to talk to him. Yeah, I saw him. I heard this noise like a backfire, and then this fellow came out of the store and started to run down the street. You get a good look at him? No, he went down that way, away from me. You see if he got into a car? No, he ran around the corner. I didn't think a lot about it till after the whole thing was over. Could you describe him for us? No, I just got a look at his back. Nothing about that that would stand out. Uh-huh. You might talk to that girl, though. What girl? Well, when the fellow ran out of the store, he almost knocked her down, ran right by her. You know who she is? Not right out. Sure feel like I do. What do you mean? I see her every week. Where's that? Home every Saturday night. What's that? She's on television. From the witness, we got the time of day of the television show. We contacted the network and obtained the information that the girl's name was Betty Martin. They went on to tell us that she was working in a nightclub in Beverly Hills. Frank and I drove out to see her. She was sitting at a table talking to some people, and we asked the waiter to tell her we'd like to see her. Hello, you want to see me? Yes, ma'am. Would you sit down, please? Thank you. Here, I'll get that chair for you. What can I do for you? We're police officers, Miss Martin. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How do you do? Hello. We understand that you're in the area of 14th and Flower tonight, is that right? That's right. Uh, why? Well, there was a holdup and shooting down there. It's possible that you might have seen the man who did it. Oh, I don't think so. My manager and I went down there to listen to a group that's playing, but as far as I know, I didn't see anybody else. Oh, excuse me. I'll be right back. Uh, if you wait until I'm finished, I'll tell you what I can. Well, it's rather important, Miss Martin. We'll wait. Well, so is my job. I'll do one song, and then I'll be back. Right. Thank you. Excuse me. Pretty song. Oh, thank you very much. It's a new song written by a fellow named Arthur Hamilton. Yes, yeah, very nice. Now, what's this about a man I'm supposed to have seen? Well, we told you there was a shooting at 14th and Flower. Uh huh. Well, one of the people in the neighborhood recognized you, and he tells us that the suspect ran right by you. Is that right? Gee, I don't remember. Um, just a minute. Oh, now I remember. Yeah, he ran out of the store, almost knocked me down, didn't even stop to say anything. Oh, did you get a good look at him? Well, he ran into me. Mm. Can you tell us anything about him? Well, I'm afraid not. I, I didn't pay any attention. Something that happens and you don't think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Would you know the man if you saw him again? 
I don't think so. The whole thing happened so fast. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about him that you remember. No, unless it was his eyes. Ma'am? Well, his eyes, like, like he was looking right through you. Eleven forty six PM, Frank and I went back downtown. The search for the killer had spread throughout the city. Additional units from all divisions were called in to help. From the description given us by the victims and witnesses, it appeared more than likely that the suspect was a narcotics user. If this was true, it was more than possible that he'd cut down anybody who got in his way. Frank and I contacted the office and talked to Captain Donahoe. He'd taken over the search for the gunman. Because it was impossible to cover all of the liquor stores in the area, it was decided to ask the owners to close. Frank and I were assigned to places along Vermont Avenue. The first six stores we contacted cooperated. By the time we got to the seventh, the rain had stopped. We parked the car in front of the place and walked in. At first, there was no one in sight, but then in the storeroom, we found the owner. He was lying on the floor, his head buried in his arms. You go away. Leave me alone. You all right? I am now. I want to stay that way. Now, you get out of here. Look, we're police officers. What's the matter with you? Now, don't try that with me. I know who you are. You got all the money. There's no more to take. Come on. It's no joke, fella. Now, listen. I remember what you said. I ain't going to get up from here for another two minutes. I can see my watch. Still got two minutes. Come on. Get your head up from the floor. You can see this card. Huh? It's an identification card. Here. See it? Are you sure? Well, you're looking at it. Now, look. If this is a joke, I'm not going to like it. Come on. Come on. Don't worry about it. Now, get up. Come on. Well, it's about time you got here. It's a terrible thing when a man's robbed in his own store and nobody's going to take the time to protect him. You were held up tonight? Yes, sir. Not more than three minutes ago. Guy left. He told me to stay where I was for five minutes. What did he look like? Huh? The man who held you up, can you describe him for us? Yeah, a young kid, just out of his teens, roaming around the street, threatening citizens. You cops ought to do something about it. What did he look like? Well, he was dark, black hair, black eyes, wildest looking eyes you ever saw. One look at him, and you know he meant what he said. Stay put, and I did. I'll call him. All right. What's he going to do? Put out a broadcast. For the hold-up man? That's it. Well, I don't want to tell you your business, but it sure seems like a waste of time. What's that? Well, if he hears it, he ain't going to give himself up. The broadcast was put out to all units. From the description given by the victim, we were sure it was the suspect. All of the cars on the perimeter of the search area were drawn in, and the entire vicinity was surrounded. It took a little over 20 minutes to get the cars into position. Frank talked with Captain Donahoe at the corner of Vermont Avenue and Beverly Boulevard. After the meeting, he came back to the car. Well, that does it. Yeah? The area's secure. Were they trying to nail him down? No. They figured to keep the area surrounded, wait till morning, and then move in. You think he's still here? We'll know in three hours. <laughs> The search of the neighborhood netted nothing, and the area was secured for the night. The rain kept up. All officers involved in the operation were kept on duty. At 6.20 a.m., the circle began to tighten. House by house, the space where the killer could be hiding was eliminated. All cars into and out of the area were stopped and searched. 7.15 a.m., the perimeter began to narrow. At 8.46 a.m., a call went out to all units. All units on special detail in the vicinity of Vermont Avenue and Beverly Boulevard. Regarding the suspect wanted for murder, possible suspect believed to be in the vicinity of Vermont and Catalina Street. Attention all units. Special detail. Regarding the suspect wanted for murder, possible suspect believed to be in the vicinity of Catalina Street and Vermont Avenue. That's us. Yeah. Be a break if it's him. All right. All units on special detail in the vicinity of Vermont Avenue and Beverly Boulevard. Regarding the suspect wanted for murder... Possible suspect believed to be in the vicinity of Vermont and Catalina Street. Attention all units. Special detail. Regarding the suspect wanted for murder. Possible suspect believed to be in the vicinity of Catalina sure Street. Sure doesn't make sense. Vermont hmm? Avenue. Why do you kill a man for a streetcar token? <laughs> According to the report received by the complaint board, a woman in the vicinity had seen someone run through her backyard. When she shouted at the person, he continued running and disappeared into the alley. All cars in the area converged, and a complete search was started. As time went on, the possible hiding places narrowed, and finally the suspect was left with less than a block in which to conceal himself. Frank and I joined the officers on foot. After 20 minutes, we found ourselves in the backyard of one of the houses on the street. Looks like a chicken house back there. Better check it, huh? Yeah. 
All right. You got it covered? Yeah. Joe. Sure. All right, come on out. Keep your hands where we can see him. Don't shoot, huh? Please don't shoot. I give up. Stand still. Right where you are. I, I'm doing like you say. Don't shoot. All right, get up against that wall. Come on. Put your hands up there. On the wall. 38 revolver. If I'd have given it to you, I don't want any trouble. Always works out that way, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, you guys are big as long as you're holding the gun. As soon as somebody else has got it, you fall apart, don't you? I don't want no lectures, cop. Just take me in. That's all you got to do. Take me in and make a book. We'll do that. We'll end up on a limb anyway. You got nothing to hold me on. That's so? Yeah, I've been around cops a long time. I learned it the hard way. Don't tell them nothing. That's the way to make it. Don't tell them nothing. Well, you missed one of the big points. Huh? This gun you were carrying. Yeah. Maybe that'll tell us. The suspect was taken to the city hall. He was mugged and fingerprinted. From his prints, we identified him as Max Hanford. He had a record listing several arrests for violation of the State Narcotic Act and two counts robbery. However, he'd never served time on any of the charges. We talked to him for an hour without result. 10.40 a.m. Why don't you leave me alone? I got nothing for you guys. Well, you keep believing that. We got people coming in who are going to lay it on you. For what? 2-11 and murder. You're out of your mind. We got you made on all counts. Any way you slice it. You're on the needle, cop. Is that so? Yeah, you got one beef on me. Most you can tag me for stealing chickens. You sit down and try to think what a judge is going to say when you read that awesome court. All right, Hanford, you keep that smile on your face. You go right on believing that we can't press a charge that'll stick. Now, we got a half a dozen people on the way in here. They'll point you out in a crowd. And as soon as they do, we'll drop you in a cell and hold your ISO. Won't be long until that yen gets so big you'll be yelling for us to turn you loose. You got it all figured, haven't you? That's right, right down the line. You're a hype. You're hooked, and you're hooked bad. Everything's working for us. You go through the cure and you'll tell us what we want to know and you'll be glad you got the chance to talk. We don't need your help. We're home free without you. You keep up the way you're acting, see how far it gets you. You really figure you can box me in? Without a door. When'd you call the people? What's that? To point me out. A little while ago. Well, can you get them before they leave home? Why? No reason for them to make a trip. I'll give it to you. You want a stenographer? Might as well. I got nothing to lose. I'll give you the story. I'll get him. Go ahead. Lousy deal. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't want to kill that fellow, you know. Well, why'd you do it? I was high. I just had a pop. I felt like I owned the world. And he pretty sort of think the guy was holding out on me. I guess you think that's a pretty bad reason. That's right. People don't understand. You get a bad habit working on you, you do anything to feed it. Is that right? Sure, you let me talk to anybody. Let me tell them what it means to have a supply shut off. I'll tell them what it's like. I don't care who it is. You put me in front of a jury, I'll tell them. Yeah, well, you'll get the chance. Tell him it wasn't my fault I got hooked on this stuff. That's why I did it. I'll tell him. Well, while you're at it, you can tell him something else. Why? Why you started taking narcotics. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On February 16th, trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. <laughs> Max Gifford Hanford was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree and received sentence as prescribed by law. Because the jury failed to return a recommendation for clemency, he received the maximum sentence and was put to death in the lethal gas chamber at the state penitentiary, San Quentin, California. You have just heard Dragnet. The authentic story of your police force in action and starring Jack Webb, a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.